Welcome to 24 Shades of Blue, Missing Persons Edition. I'm your host, Andy O'Brien. At 3 p.m. on January 27, 1999, while her father was taking a nap, 15-year-old Nancy Liu left her apartment in Regent Park, Toronto, to meet someone and never returned. Sitting with me in our studio today to discuss the case is Detective Shona Patterson of Toronto Homicide and Missing Persons Unit. How are you, Shona? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Can you first let us know what were the events that led up to Nancy's disappearance? So Nancy was at her home address, which was in the Dundas and Parliament area. She was living in a residential building there with her dad. Um, She's been captured on video at... 4.50 in the evening on January 27th of 1999. And she had come down to like the foyer, the back foyer of the building. She was loitering there for about 10 seconds. We have her on video. Then her face brightens up. She smiles and then she runs out the back doors. So she clearly has gone out and run out to somebody that she knows, but we just don't know who that is. And how would you describe Nancy's appearance and overall character? Nancy was quite petite. She was 5'1", with uh, long, dark hair. She had a small little scar on her upper lip, and she had a birthmark on her left cheek. And what was she wearing specifically the last time that she was seen on tape? On video, we have her wearing a waist-length white winter jacket, um, platform boots, and a pair of blue jeans. And how is Nancy's relationship with her parents at that time? She has a really strong sense of um, family. However, she was struggling a little bit with the rules at home uh, leading up to her disappearance. There was about a three-week period that she was living at another location um, simply because she just didn't want to have a curfew. But sadly, during that time, her dad was quite sick. So he was in hospital often. So she kept a very close relationship. She would always visit him at at hospital. And the time of her disappearance, she was actually in the middle of her grade 10 exams. Nancy was also uh, known to frequent the Regent Park Community Center quite often. And I'm wondering, could it be to meet up with someone who could have a hand in her disappearance or is there any connection there between her disappearance? So she had a a large group of friends. She's very social, uh, described as very boisterous. I'm sure that they would hang out at the Regent Park Community Center just to hang out, just teenagers. They're in grade 10. And clearly on the video, it shows that she knew the person that she ran out to. It's never been established by police who that person was. I want to dig a little bit deeper there. So the surveillance video in the building had captured Nancy, you know, live. And she was waiting in the hallway and then she ran towards an individual that you say she knew. Was there anyone else on that video? Was there any clues to the type of car maybe that that individual was was driving? Anything at all? Unfortunately not. It did appear that she was waiting for somebody. She was waiting for this particular person. And whether that person even picked her up in a vehicle, that's never been um, established either. So her friends, her family, certainly there are specific people that she would hang out with consistently. Was anybody brought up as a person of interest by any of those parties? There were people that police definitely focused on. Um, However, and it wasn't necessarily people that were reported by her friends or family members. It was just people that were also known to the area. All of those people were eliminated from her disappearance. And we're going to now take a look at some pictures that we have from the scene, Shona. Let's let's discuss them. If you could describe what we're looking at here, please. The first one is uh, the intersection of Dundas and Parliament. Um, This is where Nancy lived. She was in a high rise building in that area on Dundas. Behind the Regent Park Center, there has been in the past, a lot of gang activity in Northern Region Park. Could there be any gang uh, ties here where she was just maybe in the wrong place at the wrong time? What are your thoughts on that? Yes, that's always a possibility. Um, I know that this area has gone through like a revitalization and there are still some gang, some gang activity there. It is possible that the person that she was waiting for could have had ties to this area, to the gang activity. It's it's definitely um, not something we've ruled out. And I think when we look at a lot of these, sometimes, you know, in past cases, I know that I've that I've talked to uh, different FBI agents about oftentimes people that are um, abducted or hurt. It happens with somebody they trust to get in the car or to go with them into a secluded area, um, these types of things. So. Is there any uh, 
love interests that she may have been seeing at the time? Is there how how deep have we been going down that foxhole? So it was explored whether Nancy was dating anyone at the time, and it didn't seem that she had a boyfriend. Um, but we are in the same mindset. The longer that she is uh, missing, any person that that is missing, they become more vulnerable by the by, by the passing moment. And in this picture, we see a school shown up. Let's talk a little bit about the school and and the relevance here. Um, so this is uh, where Nancy went to high school. She was in grade ten and in, in the middle of her uh, school year. Um, and this is a Mo- Monarch Park Collegiate Institute. Shona, we also have a couple of uh, still footages here that is a little bit grainy and not quite clear. Um, But let's talk a little bit about what we can see. So we're very fortunate that we actually were able to capture her on video. As you can see, it's 16 years. So back then, the video quality wasn't as good as what we now have and what we now rely on. Um, But it does clearly, uh, she has been identified by family members and people that knew her that that was in fact her and what she was wearing at the time. Before she left her place, she did have a very short conversation with her dad, who was just about to lay down and take a nap. So he was able to corroborate that is in fact her wearing the the white winter jacket there. And when I mentioned the second photo shows her running out to the friend or person that uh, she had been waiting for. And this is the last time that we have uh, any footprints of life for Nancy. And we see a person in the first one that looks like they're wearing a dark jacket. Who, who is that? You can tell, like the time frame is very close there. So at 6.50, um, within seconds, she's standing in the foyer uh, looking out to the back parking lot. We have her on tape for about 10 seconds waiting for a friend. And then she runs out to meet them. So this person is passing um, at the same time. So at one point in time, they were identified and they were explored to, to what they knew about Nancy. And Shona... What can the public do to help the investigation? Maybe they know something now. Uh, Maybe they knew something 16 years ago. Uh, Any information that they are willing to share with us, we're willing to listen to and we we will investigate it. Shona, thanks very much for being here. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Andy. 